Today we're going to look at the differences between using a hydrometer and refractometer. Now what I'm going to focus on is the accuracy and consistency of the refractometer. The advantages here are it's quick, it's simple, if it uses a very small sample size, and it has what's described as automatic temperature compensation. And that's really what I'm going to focus on. How efficient, how accurate is that ATC on this particular refractometer? In other words, once you take a sample, is it going to consistently measure the same value immediately as the sample's taken versus one or two minutes allowing the work to cool? This is interesting to me because during my normal brewing day, I've noticed an effect where I'll go ahead measure one particular sample, come back just a few minutes later, and all of a sudden, the refractometer changed by as much as one or two bricks. And that's a huge difference when trying to measure your gravities. So I thought I'd set up a, an experiment, have a controlled environment today to do that, and then actually replicate this during my brewing day to really measure the value of the time-tested hydrometer versus the benefits and the attractiveness of using a refractometer. So let's go take a look at the setup and we'll, I'll show you what we're going to do. So here's the setup. I have a small sample of some wort I made with DME. Have a rough value, kind of in the mid-range of where we'd be brewing on any given day. With that, I have my thermometer, so I can monitor the temperature of that. I have our refractometer, which is pretty typical of the refractometer that I think all of us use. Over here, my hydrometer, as well as a sampling vessel. Back here, I have another temperature probe that's going to show us what the ambient temperature is as well as a timer so I can time the latency between when the sample was taken and the measurement. And I'll be logging this information on the board in the back here where you'll see the process will be to heat the wort up to boiling, take an immediate sample, let that sample cool a couple minutes, log both those uh, data points, as the work cools down, repeat that process. I'll also be taking the hydrometer reading of the sample so we can measure against it. So again, I'm looking at consistency of each sample right after the sample's taken and allowing it a little bit of time to cool to room temperature. Because I think oftentimes the problems we have with our refractometer is that even though the ATC is a feature listed, you really still need to have the, the ambient temperature and the sample at a stable temp. So we're going to go ahead and take all these measurements. I'll also mention that prior to doing any of this, I've already calibrated the refractometer with some distilled water to make sure it's zeroed out exactly right. And so again, I'm interested in the accuracy, but also the repeatability using the refractometer versus the numbers that we're going to see with the hydrometer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll do the steps. I won't show you each and every increment as I move along, but you'll start to see the data points as they filled out. So let's start with the boiling wort here. I'm going to bring this little sample up. I'm going to take my hydrometer reading. I'm going to take my refractometer reading right away, wait two minutes for the sample to cool, and then try again. Now we're ready for the final measurement. We look down, we see our work temperature right at 69 degrees. Come over here, I'm going to go ahead and take out the thermometer probe, put in the hydrometer. Do a little spin here. Get this, we can 
can see the value on it. And you can see we're right at 1030. So we'll use that as our calibration to monitor our refractometer results. Okay, so here's the results, and I have to say I'm uh, surprised by them. You can see that the consistency in the BRICS measurement using the refractometer, both immediately following taking the sample and letting it cool just a few minutes, really pretty much uh, the same value. In fact, I would say this, the measurement error just in reading the scale, because it's kind of compressed, leads to some of the variability here. But you can see overall, we were hovering right in that 7.8 to 8.0 range. One number, 7.4, a bit of an outlier, but we'll, we'll ignore that one for now. The hydrometer gave us a reading of 1.030, and doing the bricks to gravity conversion, the refractometer was given a consistency of a 1.032. Now, admittedly, that's slightly off from the uh, measurement of the hydrometer, but again, I'll throw out that that's within the measurement error of the devices used. And again, the consistency of the refractometer is really what I wanted to focus on. Now, what I plan on doing on the next brew day is take this a step further, because that's when it really counts. That's when we'll have a more complex uh, work using an actual recipe versus a single DME. Also, I'll be taking the sample at um, right after the sparge, and as soon as the boil begins, I'll make it a point of taking a sample size large enough to use the hydrometer. I'll let it cool down enough to, to get an accurate reading. And then I'll repeat the steps similar to what I did here, but I'll measure the uh, gravity reading both immediately upon taking the sample at two minutes of cooling and five minutes of cooling. I'll probably do the same thing actually once the boil is done and I can measure the actual um, starting gravity, the, the original gravity. Again, just trying to get more data points. So it'll be interesting to see those results. I'll do that as part two of this video. For now though, I think we're looking pretty good. I think that the effectiveness and ease of using the refractometer really is showing that it is a viable tool for us to use in the home brewing environment.